Welcome to The Jump. I am Rachel Nichols. We have very heavy hearts here today, and in the next hour, you're going to hear from the logo, Jerry West, from Kobe's old teammates, Robert Ori, Matt Barnes, from Tracy McGrady, and Ice Cube, so many others who knew Kobe well. First, though, we were just talking about him. I don't know why we always say something like that when someone dies. It's like we think we can pull on a string and, and tug back to the moment when everything was okay. Maybe if we can do that, we won't have to face what happened to Kobe and his 13-year-old daughter, Gianna, and seven others, each of them special, each of them just wiped out of the sky. Maybe we think that if we tell the old stories, the new one doesn't have to be real. The thing is, we were just talking about him. Our show was in Philadelphia on Saturday night when LeBron passed Kobe for third on the all-time scoring list. And in the locker room, LeBron was just telling the story of how when he was 15 years old, Kobe gave him a pair of shoes. Kobe's a size smaller than LeBron, but LeBron said he absolutely stuffed his feet into those babies to play the next day because they came from Kobe. And anyone who loves this sport knows what that means. Oh, and um, we were just talking about Kobe with Tracy McGrady a week or so ago because they were in this middle of this adorable stretch of AAU tournaments that both of their kids were playing in. So they would be like the dad club sitting in the stands together and cheering each other's family on. You know, T-Mac was Kobe's earliest rival and also one of his earliest NBA friends. And last year, the three of us all sat down together to tell some stories. Here's one. So how old were you when you guys met? I think I was 18, yeah, I was he was 19. 19. Right, because you're a year ahead. Yep. Yeah, this is when I, I knew, okay, he likes to play mind games, and he always trying to get an edge on whoever, his opponents, whatever. I don't care if I'm his friend, whatever. Right. So, right, I told him, I said, I'm about to go work out. And he was like, what are you going to work out for? You're in the off season, like, you don't need to work out. And I'm looking at him like, okay. <laughs> so, all right, go back to my room, change. Take it easy. Chill for a minute. I go to the weight room. Who's in there? <laughs> this dude. <laughs> this dude. And I'm looking like, what? <laughs> okay. So I had to start taking notes like this dude right here. So he's always going to have an edge on somebody. He had a hard time understanding what sarcasm was. Right. I was mm -hmm. just being sarcastic. Yeah. Already had a year in the league, <laughs> taking advantage of a young boy, you know. That was Kobe, and every other NBA superstar knew it, like Kevin Garnett. We were just talking about Kobe last month. KG was visiting the set, and I asked during a commercial break about what promised to be an insane Hall of Fame ceremony this fall because Kevin and Kobe and Tim Duncan were all up for induction. KG and I joked about Kobe's speech, what it would be like, how competitive trying to be outshining, right, KG and Duncan, even in that. Of course, now, that speech, we will never hear it. My God, we were just talking about him with Luka Doncic because Luka's incredible rise this season involves Kobe. Because of course it does. Kobe brought Gigi to watch Luka play and actually started trash talking Doncic from the sideline. So Doncic, a fan is heckling him and he looks to see who it is and it's Kobe Bryant. He talked a little trash to you. I understand he was actually talking in Slovenian, is that yeah. right? Yeah. What did he say? Uh, I can't say that. <laughs> I can say that. Too many curse words or what? It was like some, somebody was talking to me and I turned around and I was like, I saw Kobe. I was like, what is going on? I was surprised. I was shocked. How's his accent? Great. Yes? And I know uh, Kobe. I watched him a lot. He was just amazing. You know, him and I mean, LeBron was obviously my favorite, but I always watched Kobe. You know, he was a beast. And what he did on the floor was just amazing. You know, Kobe initially didn't attend a lot of NBA games after he retired. It was Gigi who got him back into watching the league. She was his little shadow, just as curious and smart. And much like her father before her, she absolutely already knew as a teenager she was destined to be great. Here's Kobe describing her on the Jimmy Kimmel Show. The best thing that happens is when we go out and, and, and fans will come up to me and she'll be standing next to me and they'll be like, Hey, you got to have a boy. You and V got to have a boy, man. You have somebody carry on the tradition, the legacy. She's like, Oi, I got this. <laughs> <laughs> you know, boy, for that, I got this. <laughs> like, that's right. Yes, you do. You got this. That clip just devastates me because it is Kobe the father 
which is the way we were just talking about him the most often over this past year or so. Remember, when Kobe came into the league, public opinion was rife with stereotypes about black fathers, especially pro-athlete black fathers. But Kobe was one of the players who very visibly put the lie to that because he was so devoted to those kids. I saw Kobe just a month or so ago, and there he was, so proud, pulling out his cell phone to show me new pictures of his girls. And honestly, I could tell you a thousand Kobe stories. I have known him for literally half my life, but two of them stand out in particular. The first one he wasn't even actually there for. This was more than a decade ago. One of the coolest work assignments I ever had interviewing Barack Obama. They took me to the back of the plane to meet him, and the first words out of Obama's mouth before he even said hello were, hey, I saw you on TV at that Lakers game last week. What the hell was Kobe doing? And that's when it hit home for me that yes, like everybody else, the president of the United States was, he had just been talking about Kobe Bryant. Kobe was that much of a part of the fabric of American life. The second story, I've told this one often in the 23 years since it happened because of how much it means to me. I was still starting out as a reporter, a young woman in a time when locker rooms were still not friendly places for young women. Sometimes it was hard just to get players to agree to an interview. But when I went to go do a story on a rookie named Kobe Bryant, not only did he sit with me on a bench for 45 minutes, he told me he could relate to how discouraging it could be sometimes, how some of the vets on his team did not like this kid straight out of high school getting all the attention, how they were hazing him. As we stood up, he said to me, you and me, we're gonna be just fine. They have no idea what's coming. They didn't, of course, not with him, but we know now. You cannot tell the story of the NBA without Kobe. You cannot tell the story of Los Angeles without Kobe. Even fans he'd never met, so many can't tell the story of their own lives without a scene that involves Kobe. All of us, all the time, for reason after reason, in year after year, we were just talking about him. And we will keep talking about him forever.